take your Bible this evening, if you would, and uh, turn over to the book of Hebrews for our scripture reading. Hebrews chapter 10, please. Hebrews chapter 10. We're going to begin reading with verse number 30. And we'll read to the end of the chapter, verse number 39. We'll read the verses responsibly, as we normally do. Uh, we'll begin together on verse 30, and then I'll read 31. We'll alternate like that. And then we'll end together on verse number 39. As our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture. All of us standing pleased to read God's word. And let's begin together on verse 30 of Hebrews chapter 10. Ready? For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But call to remembrance the former days, in which, after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of afflictions, partly, whilst ye were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly, whilst ye became companions of them that were so used. For ye had compassion of me in my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense, of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. And read 39 with me also. But we are not of them who draw back under perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Father, add your blessing to the reading of the scripture tonight. And Lord, I pray that you would help us this evening. I know uh, folks are tired here that tonight, uh, physically, uh, it, uh, the big days and the push we've had takes its toll on us physically. Lord, spiritually, I pray that we can be refreshed and we can be helped tonight by your word. Lord, I pray that you will give each of us the strength we need and the focus we need to concentrate on your word this evening. I pray, Lord, that we would grasp a hold of the truth that you have for us here in this passage of Scripture tonight and others that we'll look at. And so, Lord, help us tonight and, and Lord, make it profitable for us that we've looked into your word together this evening. Give us what we need before we leave this place tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you may be seated. Patience is something that we don't have a lot of in our society. Uh, if most of you were honest, you probably what you struggle with in your life, one of the things would be patience. After all, uh, it's our generation that has come up with fast food. It is our generation that has come up with the microwave. It's our generation that has come up with the Concord jet drive throughs pizza delivery in 30 minutes or less, and express lanes at the grocery store. You ever, you ever looked in the express lane and saw somebody and you started counting their items, how many they had, huh? What are they doing over here, right? That shows your patience. Most, most of the things that upset us or maybe get us ticked off a little bit uh, revolves around impatience of some kind or another. Long line at the restaurant, waiting at the doctor's office, uh, slow service <laughs> when we want something to eat, slow drivers in the fast lane. Our long sermons. Wait a minute, how'd that get in here? <laughs> no, shouldn't have said that, should I? We think sometimes an impatience is just a quirk in our character. But the truth is, it's, it's, it's more important than that. 
And the truth is that hiding just under the surface of impatience is anger and selfishness of spirit, uh, uh, an attitude of entitlement that indicates that something's wrong in our relationship with God. Sometimes people say, I just don't have the patience to do this or do that. Fill in the blank. Sometimes we can admit that patience is not one of the things that we have patience to wait for. But it's something that all Christians ought to have. And it's not something that you have to work up or you have to wait for. The truth is, if you're in Christ, you have patience. The ability to walk in patience is going to be our decision. But patience is available to us because we're in the Lord Jesus. We have to yield to that. Some people don't like to hear things like that, but it is what God's Word has said, and I think you'll see it as we look at the message tonight. I, didn't, I purposely didn't announce that I was going to preach on, ye have need of patience. For fear that some people would say, well, I'm not coming to hear that. I don't have patience to hear the sermon on you have need of patience. But you understand, I want you to turn from Hebrews, where, by the way, we'll look at that verse again, where it says ye have need of patience in verse number 36. But I want you to go just past Hebrews to the book of James. James opens in chapter 1 with some uh, very interesting verses about patience. Will you look with me at verse number 1? James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, My brethren, talking to believers, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh what, church? Patience. But let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Notice, <clears throat> let patience have her perfect work. Patience will have her work in our life if we let it. We have to yield. We have to allow. God, God is telling us that we have to let patience have its perfect work. If we don't let it, it will not have its perfecting work. And it's not because, well, God doesn't want what's best for me. No, it's because you're not allowing God to give you His best. You're not allowing Him to, to have His plan in your life. God, God doesn't override our will. God, God's will is that all men be saved and all men come to the knowledge of the truth. Do all men get saved? Do all men come to the knowledge of the truth? Absolutely not. Why not? You will not come to me, Jesus said, that you might have life. Man has a will. And if man won't will his will to come to Christ, then he will not be saved. But the same is true after you're saved. If you will not follow Jesus, if you will not follow what God says, God won't override your will. God doesn't desire that we just kind of go tripping and stumbling through life, messing up, and hoping He's there to catch us when we fall. Usually, the reason we're stumbling and tripping and messing up is because we're trying to do our will and not His will. We're determined to go our way and not go His way. It's so much better to stand on His promises. It's so much better to desire to do His will and to live by His Word than it is to try to do our own will. That's where patience comes into play. Look at some scriptures with me in the book of Hebrews, will you? Uh, turn to Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. Notice with me Hebrews 6 and verse 12. Notice what the Lord says here. He says that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Not only do you need faith to inherit promises, you need faith and 
patience to inherit the promises. Sometimes people say, well, I, I prayed and I had faith, I believed God and He didn't come through. I must not have had enough faith. No, there might not have been anything wrong with your faith. You just didn't have enough patience. You wouldn't wait for God to answer. You didn't have patience to wait for Him to give you the promise. That, that's when you inherit the promises. Faith and patience. Look at Hebrews 10 and verse number 36. Hebrews 10, verse 36, where we read this evening. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. And then don't forget Hebrews 12, verse number 1. Wherefore, seeing we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which thus so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So, if, if, if you're a person tonight and you say, well, I'm not sure I've allowed patience to have its perfect work in my life, i got news for you. It's not too late. It's never too late to start. Start where you are. Start tonight and allow God to have to allow patience to have its perfect work in our life. Now, keep turning from Hebrews to the book of James again. And I want you to notice again what he says. We're to count it all joy when we fall into various or, or, or uh, diverse temptations. Knowing, it says, knowing that the, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And then let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. The word patience here, as it's used, means to bear up under great pressure. To bear up under great pressure. Uh, sometimes the, the word is endurance. It's very, very closely related as the word patience and endurance. So, here's something that I read this week in preparing for this message. It says this, quote, Most of us dream of becoming rich or famous are doing great things for the Lord. We thought life would be meaningful and exciting, but instead, our lives are routine. Our daily work seems of no consequence. Or even worse, we're unemployed, ill, or aged. Others do exciting things and tell of their successes, while day by day, we seem to go unnoticed. But God knows. He saw the poor woman throw in two coins in the collection plate. He knew that Moses was tending sheep 40 years on the backside of a desert. Jesus often used the services of ordinary people on His way to do great things. The boy with five loaves and two fishes. Mary and her perfume. Simon of Cyrene to carry His cross. Jesus knows about the car that's broke down. He knows about the poor grades at school. He knows about the temper of your boss at work. He knows about the headaches that you're dealing with. He knows about the dull job or your stubborn children or the ailing relative. If it concerns you, then it concerns Christ. End quote. That's an amazing statement. You ever think about that? If it concerns you, then it concerns Christ. Now why is that? Uh, you know why? Because we're members of His body. 1 Corinthians 12. We're members of His body. It hath, got, God hath, it hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased Him. He, he's placed you in His body. You know, anything that has to do with your body would concern you. You know, minor surgery is surgery on somebody else. Anything cut on me is major. Okay? And so, why? Because it's my body. And, and you know, nobody says, um, you know, I, 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 I hurt my hand, but that doesn't matter. It's just my hand. You know? No, you kind of like that hand. And so if you ever hurt your hand, had it in a sling, and do everything with the other hand, that's quite a, quite a change. It, it concerns us. And listen, we're part of Christ's body. And so if it hurts us, it hurts Him. He's concerned about our, our hurts and our distresses that we have. It pleased God. He placed you where you are. 
So, uh, like I said this morning, it's no accident that people were in the service this morning. We don't know who's going to be here, but God knew. But you know what? It's no accident that you're here. It's no accident that you're a part of Bible Baptist Church. Um, Bob Myers got baptized this morning. Isn't that good? It, 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 it was wonderful, and I, some of you folks out of the service may not have known that. That's why I mentioned that. But, but you know what? It was no accident that he happened to be at Walmart the exact time and the exact day that Bob Wallace showed up at Walmart. And you go, oh, what a coincidence. That wasn't a coincidence. That was a divine appointment. And, and recognized as such, that was no accident. You know why? God wanted to place Bob Myers in Bible Baptist Church. And that's what he did. There's no accident. It, God has set the members, every one of them, that's every one of us, in the body as it has pleased Him. You don't, you don't get to join the church of your choice. You have to join the church of God's choice. You have to be where God wants you to be. And so He's watching to see if you're faithful in the monotony as well as in the trouble, the persecution, or the prosperity. You be faithful in trouble or faithful in persecution. And by the way, it's another thing to be faithful in prosperity. Prosperity has ruined more people than persecution or poverty has. But be faithful in the monotony. Be faithful in the mundane, so to speak. Same old life, same thing every day, the ordinary, the menial tasks of life. That's exactly what the Lord calls us to do. In fact, He summed it up in two words. Follow me. What are you doing with your life? I'm following Christ. What do you do for a living? I follow Christ. What do you do at the church? I follow Christ. See, Peter got caught up one time and wanted to know what Jesus was going to do with John. What are you going to do with him? You know what Jesus said? None of your business. <laughs> that's, that's deep in the Greek there. But he, he said, none of your business. He said, what is that to thee? What did he tell Peter? Follow thou me. Your job is just to follow me. How many ever thought like one man said, my problem is I'm in a hurry and God isn't. You know, really... You, you, you don't understand how much of a hurry we live our lives in until you visit another country. We get over to the Philippines. Wow. I, <laughs> you realize how time-driven and how, man, I, I, let's go. Let's, let's get this thing rolling. Uh, they met. <clears throat> there were a couple times we met and the service was scheduled for 5.30, but some of the folks were held up. They weren't quite there yet, and so they just came around and said, we're just going to wait a half hour and let them show up. So we'll start service at 6. And guess what? Everybody just stayed and talked and waited till 6. And if they weren't there at 6, we'd wait a few more minutes for them to show up. And I'm like, wow, could you imagine us doing that in America? <laughs> huh? Just unbelievable. They're, they're, they're just, we, we, are, we are in a hurry around here compared to other folks. Many of, us, many of us need patience. Let me give you three thoughts about patience that will help us, all right? From the Word of God and why we have need of patience. Number one, patience is necessary for maturity. It's necessary for maturity. Notice, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. And of course, we know that that temptation there is not, is not a temptation for evil. And because it's very simple, God says later on in the book of James, verse 13 in chapter 1, Let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. And you, you read that, neither tempteth any man with evil. There's two kinds of temptation. There's a temptation that is a testing, it's a trial, and there's a temptation with evil. God is not going to tempt you with evil. God is not going to tempt you to sin. So don't get confused. It would be a, a, a more of a trial or a testing um, and, and a temptation that God gives you in order to strengthen you. So there's two senses. God's not going to tempt you to sin. The devil tempts you to sin. The devil tempts you to try to stumble, get you to fall. 
get you to mess up. That's not God. That would be Satan. And, and God wants us to overcome. So God sends us trials, if you will, uh, uh, temptations, testings, if you will. It's trouble. God allows trouble to come into our life. And, and, and sometimes He may even cause the trouble because it helps us. It doesn't hurt us. Now God said, He didn't just say endure it. He said, count it all joy when you fall into these testings. Count it all joy when you fall into these trials. Not just endure it. He said, you rejoice in it. Be happy about it. And notice He didn't say, notice, look, my brethren, count it all joy if ye fall into diverse temptations. No, when? Hey, it's going to happen. It will take place. There's, there's everybody here tonight's in one of three places. You're either getting out of trouble, you're in trouble, or you're fixing to get into trouble. That's just where that's where that, that, that's where we are. And so everybody's in that situation. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Why? Because the testing or the trying of your faith works patience. So you can expect some trials to come. Because God, listen, they're not obstacles, they're opportunities. That God is giving to you and to me to allow patience to work in us. Because patience is going to work, and when it completes its work, it perfects us and it matures us. Gives us maturity. Per perfection doesn't mean sinless. It means that you're mature. Someone said, nobody can live above sin unless they live above a liquor store. But uh, you'll get that later. But uh, be perfect. Now, uh, someone, someone may look at a flower and say, that's a perfect flower. Doesn't mean it's a sinless flower. Okay? It just simply means it's a, it's a, it's a well-rounded, it's a perfect flower. Sometimes we look at little babies and say, boy, that's a perfect baby. We just mean it's a perfectly formed baby. Uh, doesn't mean that it's sinless. And that's not what James is not talking about being sinless. He's talking about maturity. Somebody said, when you're feeling a little discouraged and you're feeling a little blue, just look at a mighty oak and see what a nut can do. Okay? Uh, maybe that's what we need to look at. But uh, listen, God says you have a little faith and I want to mature the faith. I want to mature that faith and the way I'm going to do that is by you sending you trials where you have to allow patience to have her work. That's going to grow your faith. It's going to mature your faith. It's going to help you grow as a Christian. What do we do when we have trials? You know what we do? We pray, Lord, take it away. Lord, stop this. Lord, I don't want this. Lord, why am I going through this? Lord, remove it. And God says, I'm trying to mature you. You need patience. Let patience have her perfect work. Let patience mature you. That you may be perfect, mature, and entire, wanting nothing, lacking nothing. So really what we should do is what verse 5 says. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, which giveth all men liberty, and braideth not, and it shall be given him. What do you need wisdom for? Wisdom to know how to have patience in the trial I'm going through. Wisdom to know, God, what do you want to accomplish in my life? I'm not going to figure that out on my own. I'm not going to lean to my own understanding. I want to know what God's trying to do in the trial. I'm rejoicing in the trial. Then I'm praying for wisdom in the trial. Lord, give me wisdom. I don't want to fail the test. You know what happens when you fail God's test? You repeat them. He sends you to test again. That's the way it used to be in school. I don't think they do it that way anymore. Maturity. You can be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. It, it grows you up. You know, one of the tragedies we have in our society today is we have young people that haven't grown up. That's why, that's why they throw tantrums and riot when they don't get their way. 
That's why someone had a caption long, not, not a while back, showed a picture of 18-year-olds storming Normandy in 1944. And how about 2017, 2016, when we have 18-year-olds on college campuses that want safe spaces to go to because somebody said things that hurt their feelings? What has happened to us? What kind of cream puffs are we raising? You know what? Get uh, mature. Grow up. And, and part of that is we, we have to allow God to mature us. And He does that through trials. So let patience have her perfect work. It's necessary for maturity. But then, number two, patience is necessary for victory. Not only maturity, but victory. Look at verse number 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation... For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. The, the, the crown of life, it doesn't say you're going to get it once you're gone, once you're in heaven. It says God will give that to you now. This is not a someday crown. This is a right now crown. Victory right now. You know, Romans 5 and verse number 17 says, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, our death ruled, then much more they which receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. That's not talking about reigning in the sweet by and by. That's talking about reigning right now, in the nasty now and now. And, and we have victory, and we have the crown of life to be a victory. And listen, there's no victory without endurance. We talked about Galatians Friday night in RU that we stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Liberty. How do you understand? We just celebrated Veterans Day yesterday. We realize our liberty doesn't come cheaply. Men and women fought and died and shed their blood so we could have liberty in our country and freedom. And we think freedom just ought to come cheaply to us. No, 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 it wasn't cheap. Jesus Christ died on the cross and shed His blood. Listen, we're standing fast in the liberty where Christ hath made us free. Christ didn't just die to deliver us from the penalty of sin, which is death and hell. Christ died to deliver us from the power of sin. We can be free from sin because of what Jesus Christ did for us. The victory is ours now. Not someday, but right now. Victory, unto victory His army shall He lead. And that comes with endure it. We just, we just want to name it and claim it and forget it. And uh, think we have the victory. But that's not what He's talking about. In fact, look at um, 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Would you look over there with me? 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Look at verse number 14 with me, will you please? 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 14. If you're there, you say amen. amen. Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of His knowledge by us in every place. Did you notice what he said? Thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Sounds to me like Paul never knew defeat. Sounds to me like he was a victor. You say, well, just because Paul got into something, he, he won. He must have had it really easy. Oh, really? Do you think he had it easy? you think he had, he had all, all honey all the time and no bees? That he had all sunshine and no rain? Paul had to endure quite a bit. When you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11... You begin to read that he says, In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths often of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned. Thrice I shepherded shipwreck. A night and a day I've been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in peril of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the brethren or by the heathen, in perils in the city, and in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, weariness, and painfulness, and watchings often, in hunger, and thirst, in fastings often, in cold, and in nakedness. Oh, my friend, he didn't have it easy. 
But he said, thanks be unto God, which always causes me to have the victory in Christ. I always triumph in Christ Jesus. Victory is our gift that God wants us to have. And He desires that we have. But endurance, patience is necessary to gain the victory. Patience is necessary for maturity. Patience is necessary for victory. The truth is, the Bible says in Proverbs 25, verse 28, that if you have no rule over your own spirit, you're like a city that is broken down and without walls. When you don't have the quality of patience and the quality of endurance, bearing up under the pressure, great pressure, then, then you become open for the enemy. When the devil wants to have his way with you, he just walks right in and does whatever he wants. No walls, no defense, no nothing, because you don't have any rule over your spirit. There's no discipline in your life. There's no life of Christ. There's no victory there because of a lack of patience. We end up being victims rather than victors. You know, we need a good dose of what Paul told Timothy. Uh, to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So, you know, you're not in this to... to, to you're a soldier. You know, I don't know any of you who served in the armed services. I doubt you'd ever look at your commanding officer or your drill sergeant who's barking orders at you, maybe nose to nose, and say, you know, Sarge, you hurt my feelings when you said that. Hmm. That wouldn't have got you very far, would it? Not concerned about that. We're going to be good soldiers of Christ. Listen, we're in it, and God has given us the victory. We have victory through Jesus Christ. Yet so few Christians live victoriously. And it's because they lack patience. Patience is there to mature us, give us maturity. Patience is there to give us victory. And then thirdly, patience is there to give us tranquility. Peace. Peace. Did you notice back in James chapter 1? In fact, go, go to James chapter 5, would you please? Go over to James chapter 5. Notice with me verse number 7. First two words, be patient. Therefore, brethren, under the coming of the Lord. Here's the example. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he receive the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Look at verse 11. Behold, we count them happy which endure. There's that endurance, that patience. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, and that the Lord is very pitiful, and of tender mercy. Patience is necessary for tranquility. Here he's talking about a harvest. He's talking about a farmer. That's what a husbandman was. And he's waiting for the precious fruit of the earth. There's a law of the harvest, and, and I think we know the law of the harvest is the fact that you reap what you sow, you reap more than what you sow, and that you reap later than when you sow. All right? And so, notice it says he's waiting. He has long patience for the precious fruit of the earth he, and he, until he received the early and the latter rain. The early rain helps the seed to germinate and go into the ground. The latter rain helps it to be ready for harvest. He has to wait for both. He has to have long patience for it. He's saying that farmer needs to know that it takes patience to be a farmer. Maybe that's why we're so less patient in our day because we have so many few, fewer farmers in our day. There's no instant harvest. There's no instant harvest. What does Galatians 6 tell us? In due season you shall reap if you faint not. In due season. You don't pray, God give me patience and give it to me now. Okay? That's not the prayer that God's looking for. 
someone said, our forefathers, if they missed a stagecoach, they likely to say, well, there'll be another one along in a couple months. We get excited if we miss a section of a revolving door. We want it now, and we want instant gratification. We want, you know, I, I read about the guy who put 75 cents in the vending machine and uh, wanted to get a cup of coffee. He put 75 cents in, and he said he pushed the button uh, for sugar, and then he pushed the button for cream. And then he pushed another button, he said everything started to whir, and he heard the song, and the coffee came out, the cream started to come, and everything else started to come, but there was no cup that ever came. Right down the drain it went. He said, boy, that's really automation. It even drinks the coffee for you. <laughs> yeah. George MacDonald said this. He said, and whatever a man does without God, he must either fail miserably or succeed even more miserably. Whatever you do without God, you must fail miserably or succeed even more miserably. If you won't dodge letting patience have her perfect work in your life. I don't know what every individual in the room is going through right now. I don't know what, what God has brought into your life that He desires that you let patience have her perfect work. I don't know what it is individually for you, but I know if you'll let patience have her perfect work, it will mature you. And it will bring you victory. And it will bring you tranquility. It will bring you peace. But you have to let patience have her perfect work. You know, you can save a lot of time by waiting on God. You can save a lot of time by waiting on God. It was one of the old preachers, I can't remember who it was, but I remember them saying that he, he would spend four hours every day in prayer and Bible study to start the day. Now in those days, it was 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. And before you, before you want to try that, I want you to know, he wasn't up till 11 o'clock at night. Uh, the man who did that usually was in bed by 8 p.m. So he got his eight hours of sleep and then he got up and spent four hours with God. But the truth is, one somebody else said, oh, I've got too much to do to spend four hours alone with God. And the reply from the preacher was, I've got too much to do not to spend four hours alone with God. Is that... That changes everything and allows you to accomplish what you never would accomplish doing it without Him. You know, you got to learn something. There's, I was going to say there's some things in life you can't control, but the truth is there's most things in life that you can't control. They're out of your control. You can't control, you can't control most things you can't control most people. Sometimes you wish you could, but you can't control people. You can't control the weather. Whatever it's going to do, it's going to do. You can't control, you can't control airplanes. You can't control uh, what, the things that happen around you. You have to have patience. Somebody said it tonight, I think, God, God is working. God is working in my life. God's working in your life. So well, I just don't know what God's doing. I guess you need patience to wait and to see what God's doing. Endurance. Will you, will you be content to wait on God? Will you be content to let patience have her perfect work? That you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing, lacking nothing, Godliness with contentment is great gain. You have need of patience. After you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. What will you get? 
When you have patience and you let patience have her perfect work, you'll get maturity, you'll get victory, and you'll get tranquility. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, I pray tonight that you'd help us. Lord, we realize that so often in our America, we get so impatient, we get so in a hurry, we want to see instant everything. And so often, Lord, we confess, we carry that over into our Christian life and our relationship with You. We want everything to happen right now. And we don't like to wait. Most of us would confess that we really struggle with being impatient. And God forgive us for the times, the many times that we're impatient with You. We miss promises You have for us. We're, we're, we struggle with immaturity and we struggle with uh, losses instead of victory and we struggle with frustration instead of peace because we do not allow patience to have her perfect work. So God, help us to endure. Give us the grace we need to let patience have her perfect work. To let you accomplish in our lives what you desire to. You've done some great things in our church. You're doing good things in our church. It's exciting to see you work. Work this virtue into our lives as well. I do not know what people are going through, God, but you do. And I pray, Spirit of God, that you'll take the truth tonight and it will be a help and encouragement to people going through various trials, testings. They'll let patience have her perfect work tonight. And they'll ask you, and for wisdom, that they'll allow patience to bring them maturity in their faith victory in their Christian life and tranquility in their heart and their soul. Speak to hearts, Lord. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I'll finish praying in just a moment. I wonder how many folks tonight would say, Pastor, you know, God has spoken to my heart tonight about the need of patience in my life. I understand I have to let patience have her perfect work and you might say pastor I really struggle with being impatient I really sometimes don't like to wait on God to move and wait on God to work something in my life I, I, I just want it gone but tonight I understand God brings these trials in my life God brings these testings I'm asking God tonight I'm going to ask him to let patience have her perfect work I want Him to mature me. I want to live in victory. And I want the tranquility. I want the peace of God in my heart. Pastor, God has spoken to my heart tonight. Pray for me this evening. Will you slip your hand up, Christian? Say, pray for me, Pastor. Amen. Amen. That's good. You may put them down. In a moment, I'll pray and we'll have our invitation. If God has spoken to your heart tonight, the altar is open for you to come. Respond to Him. Bow the knee tonight. Say, Lord, let me have, I want to let patience have her perfect work. Mature me. Let me wear the victor's crown now in this life. And give me the peace, the tranquility that passes all understanding. Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to hearts tonight. Thank you, Lord, for desiring to work in our heart and life. Thank you, Lord, that you let us know we have need of patience. And we surely do. So Lord, hear our prayer tonight during this invitation time. Help each one of us to do what you're telling us to do in our heart. And I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist will play. As she plays, Brother Bob will sing the invitation. The Lord has spoken tonight. Respond to him, will you? to Jesus I surrender all to Him I right. freely give I Amen. will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live I 
surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus, I surrender. Humbly at His feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken, take me, Jesus, take me now. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all, all to Jesus. I surrender, make me Savior, holy Thine. Let me feel the Holy Spirit, truly know that Thou art mine. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all, all to Jesus I surrender, Lord I give myself to Thee, fill me with Thy love and power, let, let thy, thy blessing fall on me, I surrender all, I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Amen. Well, it's been a good day, and uh, it just it just got better. I, I got a note here saying there are sixty slices of pie and forks on the table over in the fellowship hall. The first 60, get one. There's going to be a stamp. Yeah, it's locked right now. Don't stampede over there. Crush, crush people against the door. You know, don't, don't do that. No. And uh, that'll be great. And uh, so help yourself if you'd like to go over and have a slice of pie uh, this evening. Okay. And uh, thank you again for a wonderful day. Number 11. I was uh, tell you what, it must be going well when the invitation was over today and we were dismissing people. Bob was still up here. And I looked at him. He goes, I think they got it all under control. I don't need to be over there. And uh, so, boy, that's a, that's a good thing. And uh, it really, really did go smoothly. And I know there's several of you, you you've been through this, and you know what it, what it takes. And uh, just, uh, just an outstanding job today. Praise the Lord. Oh, I almost forgot. Hayes Woodard is coming tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. to take the tent down. We need help. 10 a.m. in the morning. We need help. Okay, there's one, there's two. Anybody else? Three. Good. Anybody who can, I know you're working. I saw that hand, Ron. Don't worry, I saw it. And uh, Nathan can be here. Well, Nathan, you be here. Your dad won't be up. Your dad won't be up yet, so you, you, you just come down, all right? And that's good. Bring, bring your mom and Grace. We'll be all right, okay? And uh, that's good. And when we can get to help, that'll be a blessing, okay? All right. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, thank you for a wonderful day today. It sure has been good to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for our church, and thank you for their service and their love for you. Lord, thank you for what you did today. We're, we're praising you and giving you the glory for every decision that was made this morning, for the good spirit that was in this place. And we know that it's the spirit of the Lord. Now, I pray your blessing on our <clears throat> each of us as we go our separate ways. And Lord, I pray that you'll make us mindful of your presence with us as we leave. Thank you, Lord, for the, the pies that are still there. I pray that your blessing will be upon that as we partake of those this evening. Give everyone safety as they travel home. And, Lord, I pray others would see Christ in us. And the work that you began in some lives this morning, Lord, I pray you'll continue it throughout the week. And that each of us will let patience have her perfect work. That we may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. Let's hear you sing it, all right? Hey, it's a grand thing to be a Christian. 
It's the best thing I know. It's a grand thing to follow Jesus anywhere and everywhere I go for. It's a grand thing to be a soldier in his army here below. It's the grandest thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. God bless you. You are dismissed.